You're listening to London Today with Andy Usman. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can email London Today at cjbk.com or call 519 643 1290. Shannon, reporting from Pembroke, Ontario. I am 10 years old and go to the Lady of the Ridge School. I am allergic to dairy, milk, soy, and peanuts. And I hope you like my story. Went to the Pembroke General Hospital and they told me she was still at the school and there I saw her being transferred out of the school with her arm dangling and lifeless and I knew it was uh, very, I knew it was anaphylaxis because it was around the lunch hour time. Um, there at the Pembroke General Hospital she was resuscitated and then she was transferred to the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario and it was there that she was um, declared brain dead. It's an incredibly sad story. It does have a silver lining in the sense that we now have something called Sabrina's Law, which may well have saved the lives of um, of other students uh, here in Ontario. We're in conversation uh, this morning with Elizabeth Goldenberg, if you've just joined us, a food allergy expert in London, who we've uh, who we're consulting on this whole issue of the uh, peanut butter debate uh, in our schools. Elizabeth, um, you ha- would you introduce Amanda? I'd love to introduce Amanda. I just met Amanda last weekend. Um, she was following my work on, on Twitter and recognized me from my post, which was hilarious to me. And uh, we were connected because she is gluten-free. And she shared with me the reasons she became gluten-free, how her health was being affected, and the changes that came about when she removed gluten from her diet. So I thought she'd be a wonderful person to come online today. Uh, Amanda, we appreciate you uh, joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Amanda, what's your story? So my story started actually about 15 years ago when my mother was diagnosed with celiac disease. And, uh, you know, my sister and I watched my family have to separate their forks and knives and plates just due to her high levels um, of sensitivity. And we never really thought too much about it. We thought that my mom had to eat gluten-free. And it wasn't until two years ago that I started to not, well, you know, funny enough, I was actually a teacher um, at a private school in New York City, and I did deal with children with peanut allergies every day, but I wasn't myself, and I started to feel sick and tired, and, you know, I was sleeping eight, nine, ten hours more than the normal 23-year-old would do, and it, I really had to step back and say, why am I so foggy? Why am I so tired? I'm, you know, I started to feel depressed, and and it was at that time that I said, okay, well, maybe I have sensitivity to gluten. Maybe something's going on here. So um, I ended up moving out of New York back home to Massachusetts, where I live now, to be closer to my family to figure it out. So it's been a long two years, but I finally feel like myself again. Well, that's a wonderful story. Now, you, you had the advantage, I guess, that be- your mother had the same disorder, being a celiac, so she had to go gluten-free. Did it, it still took a while, though, to clue in that you might have the same disorder? Yeah, you know, it, <laughs> it was funny. She kind of was like, you know, she was alienated, alienated almost. You know, we, my father, my sister, and I ate pasta, and she cooked pasta for us, and she still made bread and all that, but she, we just thought she had to eat different. And we never, you know, and I look back now, and we never came together as a family and really embraced it. So, so now that I have what I have, now all of us look at it differently, and we're on a path of, you know, educating people and, trying to understand it. Well, so so, so good was, of you. Very so good of you to join <laughs> us. Uh, let me let me just bounce this back to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I, I'm hearing more and more stories of people who have an allergy to something, but they can't figure it out and their doctor mm-hmm. can't figure it out and they go for months, they go for years and some of them in fact die before it's discovered what it is and it's fairly I mean going gluten-free you can do it like now, like instantly, I know stories of a, of a family friend in our family who had migraine headaches for years, which crippled her life. And when she had that epiphany back in March, it was gluten-free instantly. She has not had one migraine since, Elizabeth. That's wonderful to hear. I mean, people hear about gluten-free and they think about people with celiac disease, as Amanda mentioned. There is a silent or latent celiac disease where people don't exhibit the symptoms that, that her mother may have had. <clears throat> There's also non-celiac gluten sensitivity, 
So these people aren't officially celiac, where you would see it on a biopsy, but their health is being affected uh, very much by gluten. And I've become aware that the best and most accurate way of testing this is a genetic test. And it's a simple Mm -hmm. um, mouth swab. You know, they they, uh, gather some saliva and and cheek cells. And um, there are three genetic markers that are the celiac markers. I, we have just about three or four minutes left, and I really want to focus on where this is all going. Amanda, let me ask you, how many people in your whole circle of friends, what fraction uh, have some kind of allergy to something? You know, <laughs> that's a really tough question because I'm of, of the party where I feel that everybody has, is sensitive to something. You know, gluten isn't even technically a protein that we're supposed to digest. So I feel that a lot of us are sensitive to something. and But people in my family are allergic to, to, to gluten, and I don't even know how that became. You know, I don't, I don't understand that. So we're trying to figure it out. But there's a lot of people in my circle who are affected with allergies. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, give us some numbers. Uh, how uh, huge is this monster called allergies? Well, people with identified uh, potentially life-threatening allergies, those are now 1 in 13. They've studied Canada, they've studied the U.S., and that's the consistent figure, 8% of the population. I'd like to say, you know, it's a personal issue for each individual to decide, is it important to me to look at my diet and see if I'm sensitive to something? Will I feel better without gluten? Will I feel better if I have less um, dairy? But for those that are identified allergic individuals whose life is actually threatened by allergies, it becomes a public issue. Let's go down a list, make a list, if we could, Elizabeth, on the fly here, of all the things that our kids are now allergic to. Some of them are very rare, but uh, peanut butter has to be on the top of the list. Yeah, there's the, what they call the top eight allergens, and those are uh, fish, shellfish, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, so that's every other kind of nut, dairy, uh, gluten, and wheat. So they say the most common ones to cause a severe reaction are the peanuts, followed by dairy. You do get more remote allergens. You've mentioned cherries, or I, I just was looking at a blog post on celery. The thing is, because they're much less common and um, they don't see as many emergency room visits, they can be deadly. Those aren't dealt with school-wide in terms of policies. Those are dealt with classroom by classroom. And very often, people can be around those allergens. They're easier to clean up. Maybe they don't give up a lot of vapors. Um, or maybe it's a simple thing just to say, if you would, just please don't send cherries to this classroom. That's the difference, school-wide versus classroom by classroom. I have to jump in because we have two minutes left. Amanda, let me ask you this. Compare your life when you had the allergy and didn't know what it was to your life now that you've gone gluten-free. Sure. So, you know, I was, um, I was an athlete, so I, I, always, I never really looked at my diet because I always ate carbs and breads and pastas kind of fuel for my energy. Um, but it wasn't, until, it wasn't until I got older that I started to realize that you know, I didn't, it, it, the fogginess and the headaches and the bloating and all of that was very prevalent in my life, and I just dealt with it. I just thought that that was going to be my life until I, I sat down, like Elizabeth said, and made a personal choice to dive into my uh, my diet and what I was doing, and, and I, I haven't I haven't felt better. You know, I have some, some funny allergies, like I'm very sensitive to bananas and apples, and um, I can't tolerate soy. So all of these things really have led to me living a happier happier life I, I, I feel so much better elizabeth is there the possibility that one of our listeners 10 of our listeners who've just been listening to amanda have said oh my goodness i think i may have an allergy absolutely we could call it an allergy or we could call it a sensitivity i mean they are different they can certainly request uh, the dna test for celiac or gluten sensitivity they can ask for allergy testing at an allergist's office. There's a blood test called the ELISA, E-L-I-S-A, slash ACT, A-C-T test, that talks about delayed sensitivities. How does your body react over time to certain food substances? That can be very informative. And hopefully by having a look at things, many more people will feel healthier. Amanda, I thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And, Elizabeth, we have probably raised more questions than we have answered. If people have questions, where can they go? They can contact me directly through the One Spot Allergy Facebook page. I'm on that constantly. 
They can link with me through my blog. It's blog.onespotallergy.com. And um, through the Facebook page, there's lots of other bloggers and networks and things. I try to help people whatever their question is. So I'd suggest that those are good places to start. Elizabeth, we have to have you back. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Elizabeth Goldenberg, right here in London. You should know a lawyer, but also a food allergy expert. 11 o'clock news just around the corner.